In the scheme of things, of course, a small electric hatchback is nothing groundbreaking. But I think the Honda e is a bit special. I think it's a bit more than just a small electric car. Not just because it's such a great looking car, because it's a completely new chassis, not because it's got a 35 and a half kilowatt hour battery with a range of 136 miles, not even because it's got more touchscreens than Tony Stark. I think this is a bit special because I reckon this car could really reshape what we expect of a premium small car as we go into an electric age. Remember back when BMW first relaunched the Mini and everyone thought that nobody would pay that sort of money for a city car, premium or not? Well, at the moment, a lot of people are questioning whether anyone will pay some 26 grand or 300 pounds per month and up for a car with this range. Honda certainly thinks they will, and talking of Mini, they do as well, since the new Mini Electric has a similar range and cost to the Honda e and is its chief rival. Anyway, we're in the Honda e, we are out in Valencia where it, the weather is absolutely biblical. You think it's been bad in the UK this winter? Well, it's absolutely awful out in Spain today. Even so, the little Honda is proving to be great fun. Now we have driven it out through Valencia, through the town there, and the first thing that you notice really is this steering. Now it has got three turns lock to lock, but it's got a really lovely sort of oily fluidity to it. It's really, really nice steering. And the turning circle on this thing is just astonishing so it's got a turning circle of uh, under nine meters so you're talking about you know London cab or smart for two sort of standards and um, it's just it's just fantastic look I mean look at this right I'll give you a little bit of a example here we go straight round hey it's so much fun love it it's really cool um, and around town honestly that absolutely does really really help the fact that it's a really dinky little car this is narrower than a Honda Jazz when you take into account these camera mirrors which are standard on the Honda e regardless of which trim you go for so it's a really narrow little car it's very short very small overhangs and the way it sort of swings around corners and stuff it's just fantastic I really really like it ride comfort is good as well so you do pick up a little bit of the sort of sort of coarse surfaces and that kind of thing it does pick up on that but actually I have to say bump absorption and stuff is really good it's got a really nice controlled ride comfort so well done Honda on that front refinement of course is great brake regen now the Honda e has got seven levels no less of brake regen so in your standard driving modes you can just toggle through the main four modes using the paddles which I really like I, I really like being able to change the brake regen levels using the steering wheel it feels quite natural to me you can use it almost like you're just changing down a gear if you want to um, or you can just pick a level that you like and leave it there or if you're around town you can select one pedal driving which is just down here and then you get very very heavy braking and you actually have a further three levels in there as well um, so you can adjust the severity of that and it's pretty good actually so even in one pedal driving mode it bleeds in quite smoothly and it's not difficult to judge where the car's going to stop even if you don't use the brake pedal so i'm quite impressed with all of that too i do think that seven levels is a bit much frankly but i guess if you own the car then you're going to probably faff about with it for a few days and figure out what settings you like and leave it there so that's all good performance is good as well so the honda e actually has two power outputs if you go for the standard car then you get 134 brake we are in an advanced model right here and that gets 152 so 0-62 about 8.3 seconds and it feels really actually quite sort of nippy <laughs> you can stick it in sport mode down here and it picks up really nicely even in the mid-range and I mean round here we're out on some more open roads and you're sort of 40 to 60 miles an hour it feels pretty good and around town it's absolutely great I just really like the way it drives I think this car drives in exactly the way you would expect it to when you walk up to it for the first time and look at just how cool it looks, how fun it looks. It's really good in that respect. It's exactly what you want it to be. And uh, also absolutely brilliant around town. So I think Honda have done a great job on that front. Now, about the range and charging on the Honda e, official range of up to 136 miles if you go for the 16 inch wheels, which you can get on either of the models. Um, or if you go for advanced, you can have 17 inch wheels, which will drop the range to 127 miles. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the real world range that we're seeing because to be honest it's been very atypical driving and also the weather's been horrific and it's just been a bit difficult really to get any kind of real world perception of what the sort of efficiency this car's doing. Certainly you would expect it to do you know a good hundred miles or over in normal conditions so 
I think for the sort of person that's going to buy the car, that should be more than enough. In fact, I think that's one of the most critical things that this car might do because I think with this and the Mini Electric coming out, the average mainstream motorist who does do short journeys all the time is going to have to shift their perception on exactly what sort of range they actually need in an electric car. Everybody panics at the idea of a car with a range of only 120 odd miles when realistically most people don't need a car that even does 50 miles if you can charge it up at home at least which is a whole other problem, of course. And on that note, if you can charge up at home, then you can charge this fully in around about five hours. Or if you find a rapid charger of 100 kilowatts, then it will take probably about 30 minutes for an 80% charge. Oddly, talking to a Honda technician today, they reckon that although this car can charge it up to 100 kilowatts, it probably won't actually charge like that for very long because they want to protect the longevity of the battery. So I think it's a bit misleading really to say that the Honda E does do a full 100 kilowatt rapid charge. One thing I'm less convinced about, if I'm honest, is the camera mirrors. I don't really like camera mirrors, I have to confess. Um, in the Honda, you even get a camera for the rear view mirror if you want, although you can actually have it as a standard mirror as well, which is nice. Look, I just don't think you get the depth perception. I worry about the reliability of the cameras in the long term and uh, I honestly had never had any issues with a standard mirror as it was. So it feels like a bit of a solution to a problem that wasn't there to me. But like I said, maybe I'm being a dinosaur. That's entirely possible. And fair play to Honda for making it standard equipment because whether I like it or not personally, it is uh, a part of the whole tech features of this car and it, the, the tech really is such a massive part of it. Once we've covered all of that, I think I have to say that I really, really like the Honda E. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop and we are gonna have a quick look around these screens. So whichever trim you go for, you get all of these screens you can see and you get all of the features. It's all part of how Honda wants this to be a really high-tech experience. So, of course you get the two side mirror screens, you get a little screen there for the driver, which normally, it's charging at the moment, just has the speed on it, which I quite like, it's very simple. These two 12.3 inch touchscreens are the main event. Now, one of the clever things you can do is you can actually have any of the features on either of these screens. So I think most people will choose to have the nav here, but if you want to, you can just flip it. You can have the nav over there. You can have your power flow here or whatever you want, your trip, anything you fancy. Um, you could even have, if you want to, you can go to the apps and you can make it into an aquarium. And why wouldn't you want to do that? All very cool you can have different wallpapers you can put your photos up there whatever um, i would add from a practical perspective i think they're pretty good actually i think it could be easy to be intimidated by this many screens initially but bear in mind that you can treat it as a very standard system you can literally stick it on nav or radio and leave it at that you don't have to use the apple carplay the google chromecast all of the things that you can do on this system because when the car's charging, you can actually cast your TV from your phone or whatever to the screen, which I think is quite clever. Um, it is a shame that I think it's such a high-tech system, and yet the graphics on the nav are pretty poor, really. So that's a bit of a disappointment. But you have got Apple CarPlay, so you can use your Google Maps and all that stuff. There is also a new personal assistant or kind of voice control thing. OK, Honda. Take me to the nearest airport. Navigating to Valencia Airport. There you go. I think she's pretty good, actually. It's very good at recognising what you're saying. And I like the fact that it's got a sort of a friendly face. It reminds me of um, those of you who were, who were around in the 90s might remember the little paper clip that you got on Microsoft Word. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. So there you go. I think, it's, um, I think it's a very clever system. I think it really adds to the whole ambience of the interior. And I would say that that is another aspect of this car, because I really like, um, I love this sort of textured finish here. I like the upholstery and I mean, you know, I do not have enough brown seat belts in my life. I really like this interior. The whole sense of being in this car is really good and it does feel like a really premium car despite a few sort of scratchy plastics and some switches down here. Overall, I wish the steering wheel went a bit lower. I wish the graphics on the nav were a bit better, but I think once you're over that initial slightly shock at how much screen there is in this car, actually it works quite well. The Honda E is such an easy car to like. From the moment you lay eyes on it, to the way it swings gamely around awkward city streets, to the high-tech finish. Of course it's not flawless, but it doesn't feel like an exaggeration to say that this is a new era, not just for Honda, but also for the city car. Thankfully, on this evidence, we'd say it's gonna be a good one. 
Head to drivingelectric.com for all of the electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews you could possibly want. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. While you're here, don't forget to hit subscribe on our YouTube channel.